Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Off the Print. Tonight with me is the Deputy Editor of Daily Mirror, Kalum Bandara, and former CEB General Manager, Dr. Susanta Pereira, who was replaced from his position on January 26, 2022. Dr. Susanta, thank you for joining me on this program. Kalum, you too. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. You are the most controversial man in town at the moment, Doctor. You have I just been replaced from the CEB as the general manager following severe resistance from the engineers union. Oh, what's going on? Why were you replaced? Well, I try to be not controversial all the time, but unfortunately controversy hits me all the time. So anyway, uh, to cut a long story short, I was appointed as the acting general manager uh, based on a court order because the next person who was to be promoted as a general manager uh, went to court and then the court issued uh, the, this is the court of appeal uh, because he was uh, he filed a writ application at the court of appeal and then they issued an order uh, informing the CB board that they cannot appoint anybody on a permanent basis okay. to the post of general manager until the final dis determination of the court case. So this was an interim order and it very specifically said this appointment shall be on temporary basis. Okay. So based on which uh, the board considered certain, certain options. For example, the Ministry of Power uh, proposed the appointment of uh, an administrator okay. uh, who is working as an additional secretary at the ministry. Uh, see, I two was working in the same position but in a different uh, capacity i was a technical person and uh, this was a non technical person a person who had no engineering background but he was a good administrator okay and uh, the board considered that option and uh, thought that uh, bringing in a non engineer to a position would lead to more controversy than it okay. already had okay so because of that, they thought to get somebody who had experience with the CAB because I had 36 years of experience before I left CAB in 2020 uh, and uh, who was familiar with, uh, with the subject on a temporary basis until the court case is concluded. Okay. So that is how I got appointed. Now as for the controversy you uh, talked about. Why was there so much of resistance by uh, the CAB I, engineers I, union? I, I, I frankly don't know. but. One thing I can say that is certainly it's a personal thing. It's nothing to do with the CV, nothing to do with the rules and regulations. Because if you if we listen to the last uh, couple of uh, interviews given by the CEB, particularly its president, the current president, he was very clear that, uh, in fact, in one occasion I heard him saying on a TV interview, uh, if you wanted to bring somebody who is over 60 or somebody outsider. You should have brought one of the retired general managers, not a retired additional general manager, right? So, which very clearly said that they were not against, you know, somebody who is over 60 or who was from uh, 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 another, another, you know, era. But they were certainly against a particular person. But you said that it was for personal reasons. What are those personal reasons? Why didn't they want you? Well, I, I, I wish I knew because. Uh, this particular engineers union, I was heading that union uh, for three years in 2000, 2001, 2003 and also 2004 and, uh, and of course there were other presidents uh, after me and there were other presidents before me. I had never seen uh, the engineers unions you know, stoop down to this low level of, of uh, yes. you know, uh, I mean it's, it's not really a controversy, it's like, uh, I mean for the want of a better word, I, I, I would say mudslinging. Yes. Now, actually, despite this court order regarding your appointment, these engineers had their way at the end of the day, and the authorities concerned they gave in to the engineers. How have they become so powerful, in your view? Well, I don't know whether it is uh, powerful or some other reason. But what happened was uh, the uh, ever since I was appointed, they were going on protest, and they they even had some uh, big demonstration, and the, uh, you know, with a sick note campaign, uh, just for one day. I don't even know how many people put on a sick note or the, they say a sick note. If you look at the statistic, I don't think all these, you know, 800 engineers, in fact, we had 911 uh, engineers uh, on our role. So I don't know how many of them have actually put sick note or they call it sick note. So that's, that's beside the point. Are these trade unions so strong that they are controlling the CEB at the moment? 
it appears to be so because uh, because uh, when when this uh, opposition started uh, the board considered some of the some of the you know requests uh, or, or i would call them demands and then board said okay what you had done is perfectly okay with the with the court ruling right then of course uh, the minister of power issued a letter to the board it's not a directive mind you because the minister can only issue a directive under section 8 of the mm -hmm. ceb act okay. of 1969 okay so this was not what we call a section 8 order it was mm -hmm. it was a, it was a request more okay. or less okay. and said uh, because of the representations made by the the engineers obviously and he requested the board to appoint the person next in line right and uh, to obviously effectively remove me from this temporary position right yes. there was no issue with that no, yes. as far as i'm concerned but what happened was the board considered this request and still was of the opinion that they have done the correct thing as far as the legal requirements are concerned because there's a court order right but but in any event they thought okay since this is a this is a request coming from the minister they would put it to the attorney general and get a legal opinion as to whether it's against the court ruling or it is against the existing law which is the cb act right now right. actually uh, these engineers or this particular engineers union they mm. have been powerful under every government they have their way over every government in the past so how what will be the future of the cb under these engineers actually well i don't want to predict uh, what the future of the cb is going to be but uh, at least tell us is it looking bleak Absolutely, absolutely. If, 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 if the government are bending over backwards to please the engineers, I mean, I'm an engineer, I'm, I'm proud of being an engineer and, and I'm very proud of being a part of the CB for 36 years. And uh, whether I have made a good contribution to CB, I'm not going to judge it, it's up to the others to judge, right? I'm not going to say what I did and what I didn't do. But, uh, but uh, you, know, uh, you know, you know, any group, okay, engineers are in the management, so obviously they have more power than you know most other categories in the, in the CAB yeah. uh, which you can understand right and uh, also they have this tradition that the most senior engineer will be appointed as the general manager who is the CEO of the organization okay. Okay. Uh, once the in incumbent retires so they had you know religiously maintained that tradition but that had nothing to do with the law what the law says is 5.1 of uh, CB act of 1969 says okay uh, competent and experienced person shall be appointed okay it doesn't even state you know it has to be engineer or anything but okay. but i'm not saying that you know people who occupied the position of uh, gm were not not uh, competent and and, and, and experienced certainly there were excellent people who, who had uh, in the past dr santi we're just going to have to go in for a very short break we will be right back Welcome back to Off the Print. Today with me in conversation is Deputy Editor of the Daily Mirror, Kalum Bandara, and former CB General Manager, Dr. Susanta Pereira, who was replaced from his position on January 26th. Doctor, uh, before we went in for a short break, you cleared up as to, you know, um, why you were replaced. But let's now get down to reality. Country is running on a very, very thin line where power is concerned. People are facing power cuts despite repeated assurances by the power minister saying that there won't be power cuts. And the public have got so frustrated that they do not know what to do. Now, we have been told by the CEB sources that we are running on such a thin line that by March we may be heading for a massive crisis. What's going on? You know, certainly we are living dangerously. There is no argument on that. Uh, now, as to your question as why we are having these problems uh, every year or maybe, you know, once in two years. I mean, answer is pretty simple because you have a problem of uh, beating the demand for electricity with your ability to produce sufficient amount of electricity, right? Now, the water or the, or the hydro energy plays a big role because if you don't have enough rain obviously you cannot generate as much as uh, you know we, we we like right uh, the the problem normally arises in the in the in the beginning of the year because uh, if you take any year uh, the first two three four months you know they are considered dry months dry in the sense you know we don't receive a lot of rain in the in the reservoir areas okay 
So, because of that, whatever water that we have, we, we have left in at the at the end of the year, we have to we have to manage it carefully, right? Now, uh, it's not not because you know the water is so cheap, you know we we are not going to run down the reservoirs, you know, because we have to uh, you know manage it until we get the next monsoon rain, which may be in in May or if you are lucky, end of April. Uh, so until such time, what we normally do is, you know, we we, we run more thermal energy yes. so that yes. we can preserve some of the water in the in the in the reservoirs, right? So that is a fairly complex calculation. You know, they use some computer models. The the, the engineers working at our system control center, they do it continuously. So you know, they are very skilled at that. You know, they they know what they are doing. Unfortunately, what happens is, you know, if if uh, something goes or something unpredictable happens. Now this year we are faced with some something which we never faced because that is the fuel we, crisis. Well, the fuel crisis is that we don't. I mean, the, the country does not have enough uh, foreign exchange to buy 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 petroleum products or you know crude oil. So because of that, there are, there was some delays in in uh, in in receiving uh, different types of fuel that we use. But we are seeing delays every day, uh, doctor. I mean, we are seeing delays no, so it much so. It, it doesn't work that like that because CEB requirements are basically they, they, they these uh, CPC, they have this uh, standing committee which meets almost every week and then they review CEB requirements because you know the ordering fuel is not a, not a simple thing because you have to order fuel that you use today maybe two, three months ahead. So you have to know what because CEB requirements are fairly, fairly large. Right, so you have, and also particular types of fuel. If you if you are talking about fuel oil, you know part of it that is produced in the refinery. If the refinery runs, we get part of that fuel oil requirement out of the refinery. Right. But whatever is uh, deficit, we have to get from imports. Right. So and that that, that, that we have to inform the petroleum in time. So maybe there have some delay this time. I don't know the exact reason, but of course this. Uh, uh, dollar crisis also okay. came in and okay. I think because of there were certain delays. So because of that you know we not only we had to use more hydro than we anticipated, we also didn't have sufficient thermal capacity uh, to compensate. Now doctor as you see things at the moment, can you simply see that uh, there will be loan power cuts in the near future? No, I mean uh, with my experience in the CAB uh, for long years, I can see the pattern that we observe today. Uh, yes, uh, a direct answer to your question is that we are, we are heading for longer power cuts. There is no argument on that. We, I will tell you what the reason is. Uh, we have certain amount of thermal, I, I will not go into the figures, but let us say you have a certain quantity of thermal generating capacity, then you also have a the certain, certain amount of uh, hydro power, right? which entirely depends on the water availability in the reservoirs. Right. But we don't have those waters. We are running well, short of the water, we right? Are not, we are, we are, we, we, you know, we are depleting the reservoirs very fast. Mm -hmm. For one thing, we don't have sufficient thermal power. So whatever we we lack here, we have to make up from hydropower, which means that we are we are depleting the reservoir faster than we would like, right? So basically, there comes a point, you know, the the reservoir levels will come down to some level. At that point, we may not be able to generate enough hydropower right yes. then the thermal power installed thermal capacity is not sufficient to provide the demand of this country so in that point even when you reach that point whether you have all the oil in the world you still will have power cuts when is crisis yeah. going to hit us uh, doctor just give us a very straight answer when are we going to start seeing well power i cuts? would i would uh, I, I may be wrong so yeah. don't hold me into that but uh, my judgment, it will be, uh, if you are lucky, we may be able to hold on till May, right? If, if we get some rain in between, which is very unlikely, because uh, unless there is an unusual year, you know, you still can, miracles do happen, right? Uh, but uh, uh, short of a miracle, I don't think we will get enough rain before that. So, uh, in my opinion, March would be you know, my, my last bit. Well, this yes. country is depending a lot on miracles. That much I can tell you right now, doctor. Can yes, and now actually when you talk about the shortage in the national grid system, so we tend to purchase power sometimes from the private sector and then it leaves scope for a lot of corruption. How serious is the issue of corruption in the CEB as you have witnessed? Well, I, I don't want to go into that question, but I think this is, a, this is something that, uh, uh, you know, you know, purely subjective basically right you know because I mean you can take one case uh, from some man and you can you can dwell on that but I don't think uh, th 
uh, you know we should uh, at least i should go into that i mean overall yes i mean there may be corruption there are, there there have been uh, reports of uh, all kinds of corruption when i go to you know these tv interviews you know during the last uh, two weeks i have been uh, you know going the circuit and you know the one of the question in the interview they come up with you know very you know specific examples and ask me do do you know that so so i'll rephrase it is there corruption within the cb yes or no i mean i would say i mean the corruption is something that uh, has to be investigated and 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 and, and determine you know uh, to a proper investigation so there have been cases like that but if you ask me a general question yes or no i think that there's no yes or no answer i mean it can be yes and no we are just going to go in for a very short break we will be right back welcome back to off the print doctor just before we went for a very short break you told us that crisis is likely to hit us in march uh, can i ask you that the this crisis involved in involve in um, issuing power supply times for the country something similar to other countries like even some countries in africa where they uh, sustain themselves on limited uh, electricity timings are we heading for something like that this is pretty much the previous of what we are doing now we are we are issuing these times during which we don't supply power so you ask in the reverse yes right yes. whether we we might come to that so we there is a possibility that. yeah yes besides that uh, now this government's policy is to go for renewable energy more and more but some of these engineers they insist on major power plants based on non renewable sources like coal and all so what is your view on that no you you need some uh, stable energy what we call firm energy like uh, whether it is coal lng that's that's a different argument altogether mm-hmm. but at least you need to have some uh, firm generation uh, in the in the grid otherwise you cannot maintain stability because as you know renewable energy is intermittent you know you can you know you, it depends on sunlight it depends on uh, wind so those things change all the time right because so that's that's the, that's the you know mm-hmm. fairly you know simple you know thing to understand but uh, when it comes to your question yes. uh, the the absorption of renewability has been in the agenda for a long time mm-hmm. but with the new government you know the, the it became a government policy mm-hmm. to go for renewable energy and re- reach a target of 70% of our electricity generation by 2030 mm-hmm. that was announced i believe uh, end of 2019 or something mm-hmm. but ceb did not you know immediately you know subscribe to that basically mm-hmm. right obviously there were pro- problems because you can't really you know absorb uh, 70% without making some major changes in the electricity but system including the including the transmission network okay. so because of that you know there are problems uh, there no argument on that but after 2 years or so you know they, uh, they basically came to accept that because it's a government policy i mean we are government uh, employees we are we are expected to carry out the government policy uh, but if there's something wrong with that it's also our job to tell the government okay look there are problems so which part has been done now you can ask an engineer are you trying to say that this government's policy to achieve 70% target that is not realistic it is, it is a government policy i mean okay uh, i am asking it's realistic or not is is a matter of perspective but because it anything is realistic as long as you find all the investment that you require to improve the grid so that it can absorb that amount of uh, uh, of uh, renewable energy so if the government says look you know that's not your problem we will find you the investment you do the work mm-hmm. so then i i don't but think, in you know, your view what are the practical barriers for us to achieve that target now 70% is a tough ask there is no argument on that right mm-hmm. because we are still at uh, a much lower level right mm-hmm. Uh, because we are talking about you know having huge you know re- renewable energy you know plants every year mm-hmm. until 2030 so it's debating on the amount of investment it requires j- not just for the plants but to improve the transmission works and uh, so many other things that comes with it, it it's it's a huge task there, there are no argument on that dr susanta uh, presently we the country is facing power cuts in the night you mm-hmm. were just replaced from your position on tuesday So till then you were in the CEB. Uh lately we have been seeing a lot of uh, controversy coming up where the power minister says no power cuts, CEB goes ahead and has to 
cut power. Is there no proper coordination between the government and the CEB? Because there seems to be definitely a gap. I, Which I is inconveniencing the public. I, I don't know the proper answer to that, but I can uh, tell you as an engineer, uh, uh, the engineers at the systems control center of CAB, they do this calculation every day. I mean, now I think probably every hour, right? So they, they know exactly how much uh, generation capacity there's going to be for the next hour, next five hours, or next day, whatever. And they, they plan the system, they, they dispatch the system accordingly. And, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, like you said, you know, we are running on uh, thin margin, right? We don't have any, 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 any spare capacity at the moment. So, even if there is a slightest breakdown in one of the plants, we are having problems. Because so, doesn't the power minister know this? Because he seems to be clearly unaware. He comes on record in front of the media, you know, looks at, looks at us inside the camera and lies to us saying there will not be power cuts and then the CEB goes dark. Well, I think that's a question that should you should direct to the, the minister himself. I think I, I don't think I should be speaking for the minister. But isn't the CEB in in conveying this to the government? They should. They should uh, absolutely. They should convey uh, the reality to the government, and they should say, look. I mean, last uh, Monday, for example, the the system control decided, okay, you can't go on uh, any further without imposing power cuts. And uh, they discussed. You know, it's not it's not an easy decision. It's not it's not a decision that they, they took overnight. And they communicated that. You know, we are supposed to get the approval of the PUCSL, Public Utilities Commission of Sri Lanka. And uh, I'm the licensee as far as they are concerned. So I signed that letter and send, send it for approval. But now in the meantime, there was a meeting with the with the president. And then uh, uh, the Petroleum Corporation was ordered to release some of the fuels, which was destined for a private power plant okay. 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 And, and, and then we were able to uh, go on without power cuts we are still getting some some of that fuel okay actually towards the latter part of the last year we experienced blackouts on two occasions and some engineers actually senior engineers of the CEB they said those are acts of sabotage do you also suspect the same well I am I'm in a committee appointed by the Ministry of Power which has been investigated this matter mm -hmm. we have already issued an interim report which has become public yes. for whatever the reasons uh, and we are expecting to deliver the final report with all our findings mm -hmm. uh, before the end of the month okay right uh, at which time i'm sure you will you will find all your answers at this moment, I don't think it's proper for me to you know Dr. speculate. Dr. Santa, we are going to ask you a final question for the program tonight. Was your appointment uh, approved by President Gotabe Rajapaksa? I, no, President does not have to uh, appoint the, uh, I mean, approve the appointment of the general manager. All, all the law, which is the CB Act of 1969, number 17, says is the person with, uh, you know, competence and uh, experience should be appointed by the board subject to the approval of the minister. So, it's, it's a minister who has to approve it. Uh, but of course, my, uh, my removal, if you are asking, it was ordered by the president at the end. Yes. Uh, right. Uh, he did it at the instigation of these engineers. Can you say it? It may have played a role. I mean, I, I, I mean, I, uh, for the want of uh, uh, finding a reason for such an opposition and you know, so much mudslinging, Mm -hmm. uh, there has to be some, some, uh, something that motivates it. Thank you for joining us on the program and let's hope and pray. Whatever happens, Sri Lankans continue to get uninterrupted electricity supply because that's a basic and not a luxury. No argument there. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for joining us on this program of Off the Print. We will be back again with a brand new episode uh, next week. At the same time, goodbye and good night.